Well, thank you for joining me at GetChemistryHealth.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and this lesson is on heat and specific heat capacity. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is that heat is not the same as temperature. Temperature is the average energy of the individual particles of motion. So let's say I had a cup of hot coffee here. So I'll draw a quick coffee mug here. Okay, so I have my cup of coffee and it has a certain temperature. Well, that temperature is a measure of all of the particles in there and the motion of them. So it's the average. So there are always some particles that have more energy and are moving faster. And then there are some particles that have less energy and are moving slower. So the average energy, that's the temperature. Now heat, by contrast, is the total energy. So the heat of the coffee mug would be the total energy of all of these individual particles added together. So that's the heat. So one way to think of it is, let's say we had a cup of hot tea versus a spoonful of hot tea. Now the cup of hot tea and the spoonful of hot tea may both have the same temperature, but they will not have the same amount of heat, which you could test. Because if, if you were to have a spoonful of hot tea, the amount of heat in your mouth would not be nearly as much as if you were to have an entire cup full of hot tea all at once. So just because they have the same temperature, they do not contain the same amount of heat. Now heat is often expressed in units such as calories or joules. Now a calorie has been defined, and that is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So let's say I had a gram of water. Okay, so if I want to heat up a gram of water, let's say it was, I don't know, a little box of water. So this is water, and I have one gram of it. Well, how much heat will I have to put into it if I'm heating it up to raise it one degree Celsius? Well, let's say I have to go from 20 to 21 degrees Celsius. The amount of energy I would have to put into this would be one calorie. So one calorie, that's the amount of energy to heat one gram of water one degree Celsius. So, that, so, so that, yeah, that is literally what a calorie is. However, that is not the kind of calories that you read about on your bag of chips or on your candy bar. Those are called nutritional calories. Notice those have a capital letter C. So yeah, on your food label, this is a capital letter C. So this is 90 nutritional calories. But a nutritional calorie is the same as 1,000 of those kind of calories we just saw. So 90 nutritional calories or food calories is actually 90,000 of the scientific calories or 90 kilocalories. Now sometimes, um, if you go to England, let's say, and read a food label there, they will actually have everything in all these units. They'll have it in our capital C calories, nutritional calories. They'll also have it in kilocalories or regular scientific calories. They may even have it in kilojoules. So you'll see all the different units of heat here. Now the specific heat then is the quantity of heat required to change the temperature of one gram of any substance by one degree Celsius. Okay, so we already saw for water that it takes 4.184 joules or one calorie to raise one gram one degree Celsius. However, it's much easier to heat up aluminum or silver. Silver, for example, it only takes 0.235 joules to raise one gram one degree Celsius. Aluminum takes, takes 0 0.903 joules to raise one gram one degree Celsius. So that means then, if I were to pump in heat into silver, the silver would heat up much, much faster. So, so the silver's temperature would increase at a much greater rate because it only takes 0.235 joules for every one degree change in Celsius. Aluminum, though, would heat up a little slower because it takes 0 0.903 joules to raise the temperature of one degree Celsius. And water would heat up the slowest of all because you'd have to put in 4.184 joules to get a change of one degree Celsius. Now the way that we can relate all of these things is this handy equation, Q equals MC delta T. And this is sometimes called Q equals M cat because it kind of looks like MCAT. So Q, that's the heat. So that is our heat. In our case, we're going to be using joules. M, that is the mass. And mass we'll do in grams. Now C is the specific heat capacity. So we'll, that's this number, which is a constant. And delta T is the change in temperature. So this, by the way, is the Greek letter delta, which normally stands for change. So in our case, it's the change in temperature. So by change in temperature, what I mean is 
it is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So, th so the heat is equal to the mass in grams times the specific heat in joules per gram Celsius times the change in temperature, which of course will be in Celsius because it's temperature. Okay, so let's try an example and see how this works. So Q equals MC delta T. So let's write that first. Okay, calculate the amount of heat released when 7.40 grams of water cools from 49 to 28 degrees Celsius. Okay, so which variable are we trying to solve for? Well, the amount of heat. So that's Q. So I'm going to solve for Q. So I need to know M, C, and delta T. M is the mass, so I got that right here. C, I don't know on this problem, but it is a constant, so I can just look that up. And for water, we already said it's 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Delta T, that's the change. So that's the change between the 49 and the 28. Okay, so let's just go ahead and fill everything in. So mass, 7.40 grams. The specific heat, C, we just looked that up on that table and it was 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the delta T, again, that's the final minus the initial. So which of these is the final? Well, 49 to 28, well, the final was 28. And initially it was at 49, so minus the initial 49. Now notice that we have multiplication and parentheses and subtraction. So according to the order of operations, you're supposed to do whatever's in parentheses first. So we'll take 28 minus 49 first. So that gives me negative 21 Celsius. Okay, now we're ready to multiply. So let's take 7.40 times 4.184 times negative 21. And I punch that in my calculator and I get negative 650.1936. Now what are our units? Well, grams canceled, degrees Celsius canceled. So we're left with joules, which we should be because it's heat. Now the last thing to consider is, of course, significant digits. So 7.40, the trailing zero is significant because the decimal. So that would have three significant digits or figures. 4.184, that would have four significant figures. And negative 20, that would have two significant digits. So we learned that when you're multiplying, the answer can only have whatever the least precise number is or the fewest. So three, four, and two. Two is the fewest, so the answer can only have two significant figures. So I have to round that off to negative 650 or the better way to probably write that would be in scientific notation. So negative 6.5 times 10 to the second joules. Okay, great. Now let's try one last example. This one says, find the specific heat of silver in joules per gram degree Celsius. So we're going for joules, grams, and degrees Celsius. If 38.5 calories is required to heat 25 grams of silver from 31.5 degrees Celsius, to 58.7 degrees Celsius. And it tells me that one calorie is approximately equal to 4.184 joules. So now we're trying to find specific heat. So that is the variable C in our equation. So Q equals MC delta T, or again, M cat, if you want to think of it that way. We need to solve for this variable, C. So I have to get C by itself. So I need to get rid of M and delta T. So I'm going to divide both sides by m delta t. So m delta t divide by m delta t. So I get rid of my mass, my delta t. So that leaves me with c was equal to q divided by m delta t. Okay, so it tells me it wants the units to be in joules per gram degree Celsius. And I have calories grams degree Celsius. So I need to convert these 38.5 calories into joules. So let's do that first. So Q, 38.5 calories. I want to turn that into joules. And it told me right here that one calorie was 4.184 joules. So one calorie, 4.184 joules. So calories cancels. So I put that in my calculator and it gives me 
for joules. Okay, how about our significant figures? Well, this one again has three. This one has four. So our answer can only have whatever the fewest is. The fewest is three. So this would have to have three. However, since we're doing multiple operations, first we're doing this operation, then I have to do all of these operations. We want to wait and round until we get to the very end. So instead, I'm just going to mark it at that third sig fig as a reminder that it should really only have three significant digits. But I'm going to go ahead and keep at least one extra until we get to the end. So specific heat C is equal to 161.084 joules. And I've underlined that third significant digit just to remind myself. Divided by the mass. Well, the mass was 25.0 grams times delta T, so final minus initial. So 31.5, and it went to 58.7. So the final, of course, is this one. So 58.7 degrees Celsius minus the initial, it was at 31.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I punched that in my calculator. And let's see, how about our significant digits? Well, 161.084 but I marked this to remind myself this should really only have three. 25.0, that should have three significant digits. 58.7 minus 31.5, well that's 27.2 degrees Celsius, and that also has three significant digits. So we've got three, three, and three, so the answer must have three, so I'm gonna round it off to 0.237. Now how about our units? Got joules on top, grams and degrees Celsius on bottom, so joules per grams degrees Celsius, which is the normal unit, of course, for specific heat, and that's the unit it asked for it in. So that worked out great. Well, I hope you found this lesson helpful. For more practice problems on this topic, please come visit me at getchemistryhelp.com, and we'll see you next time.